One of the things that makes Mutable Instruments modules so appealing is that they're open source, which means if you don't like the patterns in your grids module, you can change them. However, for the first time would-be hardware hacker, this might be pretty terrifying. So I'll show you everything you need to do. My name's Michael Forrest, and this is Leaving the Laptop, a series about playing live electronic music without using a laptop. Here's what I'm using. One, a computer. Two, a Mutable Instruments module. I'll go into a little bit of detail on changing the patterns in grids, but most of this is going to be the same for any of the Mutable modules. And then three, you need an AVR ISP Mark II USB programmer. You can get these on Amazon. If you follow the link in the description, Jeff Bezos will give me like 10p. So, you know, do that. So let's go to the Mutable website. And if we click down here, we can see the open source info. We can look at the source code. Here's grids. But how do we work on this code? That's what the tool chain is for. Building this source code means downloading loads of libraries and other bits of code that are needed to make it all work together. And setting this up yourself can be really difficult. You can lose days of your life and it's not fun. That's why Emily has kindly provided a build environment which sets this all up automatically. But to use that build environment, we need to download a couple of things first. First, make sure you've got Git. Git is a way that programmers organize their code. Uh, it lets you track every single change you make to a project and it's gonna come in really handy once we start hacking. It means if you make a mistake, you can easily rewind it and change it back. It also means that we can download other people's code quite easily. Now, I'm pretty sure Git is installed by default on macOS, but if you don't have it, just follow the instructions on GitHub. GitHub is a platform that people use to share their code with each other. It's not the same thing as Git, but it uses Git and it makes Git much easier to think about and use, especially if you install GitHub Desktop, which just gives you a graphical interface if you're not quite comfortable jumping into the command line to do all your stuff. Now, I've been using Git for at least a decade, and I'm pretty comfortable on the command line with it. But if you've made a lot of code changes, it's nice to be able to organize them using this tool. But a lot of things are easier on the command line, so I'll be showing you that first. Uh, so we'll download mutable dev environment like this. Open a terminal window, type git clone space, and then just paste in that URL from GitHub, and it'll be downloaded to your computer like that. If you don't know how to get to the folder you want in Terminal, you can type CD space and then you can just drag in an icon for a folder and it will take you there. Or if you want to see where you are in Finder from the Terminal, you can just type open space period, press enter and it will pop up the current window. Click through the links and download VirtualBox and the VirtualBox extension pack. VirtualBox is like a computer inside your computer, usually running a different operating system. So download these installers and jump through the hoops it, that macOS wants to get it working. So you can see I had to set up like some security stuff and then reinstall it and then it worked the second time. And you'll need the extension pack so that you can connect to external hardware like the USB programmer that we're going to use to upload our code to the grids. Next, we'll download and install Vagrant. Vagrant is what uses the recipe provided by the mutable dev environment to create a properly configured virtual machine. So once you've got VirtualBox and Vagrant set up, you can just type Vagrant up, and this is gonna set everything up for you. Uh, it only needs to be done once, and then you're sort of good to go in future. I saw a bit of red in the output, but it worked anyway, so I wouldn't worry about it. Here it is cloning the Eurorack repository that we saw before, and AVRlib is the thing that lets it upload the code to the programmer, but luckily we don't even have to worry about that. We can just jump into the box with Vagrant SSH, and we're in that machine within a machine. So let's just see if we can do a build first. See if it works. It works. Now we'll need an editor for the code. I like Visual Studio Code at the moment. Uh, you can download it for free here. I'll put all these links in a blog post, so check the description. Once VS Code is installed, we can open our project and look at the files. So now we're ready. We can plug in the programmer and start hacking. The patterns in grids are stored as these sequences of numbers, and you could easily edit this sequence in the C code, the CC files, but you're supposed to edit this in a Python file, which then generates that C code that you want. And the idea of that is just to keep the data separate from the way that data is interpreted, but it's still not clear how these numbers turn into beats. In my earlier video, I showed how there is an array for each pattern, and then there are three groups of 32 steps for each pattern. And that's usually used for kicks, snares, and hi-hats. So for this video, I thought I'd actually throw together a sequencer that lets you play with this data in the browser. So just go to goodtohear.co.uk slash tools slash grids dash sequencer, and you can try different numbers and hear what the beat actually sounds like. 
and I haven't made knobs or anything, but you can edit these numbers and that sets the thresholds and the probabilities in the same way that the knobs on the hardware do. And you can just hear how it will behave in different circumstances. It won't preview the mixing, crossfading between the rhythms that Grids does, but it's, you know, it's good for now. So now we can just try some different numbers out in the browser and make a pattern. And then once we've got something we like, we can just copy that and paste that back into the Python file. Here's the build command on the Mutable website. So just copy that, paste it in, and that's that's what builds it. But I think the resources we have to build separately. So if we can go resources, and that's gonna rebuild that file. And then to upload, it's gonna be the same thing, but you go upload. And this is basically your development workflow now. You make a change and then you run that command again and it will upload it to the device and you'll see if it worked. <laughs> now in the grid source, there is a bit of a gotcha, which is if you remember the X and Y coordinates, you'd expect them to be in order, but you see these node 10, node eight, like that's the order that they were in the lookup table. And I suspect they were shuffled like this to make similar sounding patterns closer to each other on that XY plane. We kind of want node zero to be the first one. So what I'm gonna do here is just try and like as safely as possible switch around each so that we get like node zero, one, two, three, four in the right order so that when we turn the X knob to zero and turn the Y knob, then we get those first five nodes as expected. So that's probably enough for most people, but it's not actually how I hacked my own grids. I went more into the C code and changed what the different knobs do. I added a crude swing control, I added open and closed hi-hats, and I put in an extra clock output that I could use to control long sample loops in my sample drum module. The knob settings are in this settings object, settings.options model, and you can see the drum densities and the pattern selection and all that. So if you wanna have a look at what I did, you can go over to my repository and you can add a remote into your project, and then you'll be able to just switch to my so now you just need a sticker that says hacked and you've graduated from Mutable Instrument Hacker Beginners Academy version 0.1.0 course module. You're winning! So be sure and let me know how you get on in the comments below. And if you like the video, click the like button. And I've got a Patreon and a donation link in the description if you are feeling the gratitude and the love. So good luck and happy hacking!